Watching TV has changed over time. Streaming has become the new norm. That's why Golden State Media Concepts Television Podcast dives headfirst to the world of cord cutting. Want to be on the loop of what's hot in Netflix? Or if it's not a preference, what about original shows in Hulu? We've got you covered. Join us as we fill in the blanks and talk about movies to stream and what show you should be binging. This is the Golden State Media Concepts Television Podcast. Good day, everybody. It's the Golden State Media Concepts Television Podcast. Today, we're going to go over the Apple TV, and then we have a King of the North size block at Game of Thrones. Season 6 has ended. We're going to go over what made you laugh, what made you cry, and what could be on the way. Stick around. You don't want to miss it. Are you looking for help for your fantasy football team? Check out the GSMC Fantasy Football Podcast. Get today's best advice on who to start, who to sit, even who you should draft. From sleeper picks to red-hot lineups, they got it all covered for you. That's gsmcpodcast.com backslash fantasy-football-podcast. We'll cover traditional leagues, dynasty, PPR, even IDP leagues. When you need fantasy help, there's just one show to hit up. Don't forget to like them on Facebook and follow Follow them on Twitter. Visit gsmcpodcast.com for more info. Hey everyone and welcome. It is the Golden State Media Concepts Television Podcast. This is Drew hanging out with you here today. All right, so we're going to dive right in because I want to save the good stuff, uh, you know, so we can keep it close together. Uh, So we've been going off and we've been discovering the world of streaming, figuring out ways to cut the cord. We got over quite a few options with you here. Uh, I'd like to give, I like to give, uh, you know, equal time to all sides. I like to give uh, each company the opportunity here. Now we're going to be dealing with a pretty big name. You thought it was pretty big with Amazon Fire TV, which by the way, I do believe I'm getting one for my birthday. So uh, thank you to everyone uh, who stuck with me with that one. And as well as the uh, people who will be getting that for me uh, as well. Um, Now we're going to go into an even bigger company. What we got here is uh, Apple. Now, Apple's been releasing the Apple TV for quite a while. Um, They've had, this is on their fourth generation now. It came out in 2015. Uh, Probably looking for a new one coming down the pipe here. It it doesn't really have a schedule like the iPhones do. But uh, considering really the major difference between Apple TV and Amazon Fire TV is that Amazon Fire has now jumped into uh, 4K viewing that Apple TV has not done. So, well, you know, Apple's not really the company that pioneers (laughs) a lot of things. They really see how well things have done, uh, software that's been done, ideas that have been done, and take that can make it better. Uh, I'm not going to say they just kind of rehack the same things, but they like to see a certain product tested first before it goes through. So the obviously not pioneering the streaming in 4k Amazon has already crossed that threshold. Uh, and now, uh, we're just waiting for Apple TV to do the same, but While you're waiting, or if you have a 4K TV and want to watch stuff in 1080p, uh, obviously uh, Apple TV is fully capable. Very similar to the Amazon Fire TV, what really it's about doing, since Apple is all about integration, and previously, you know, Apple doesn't make a television of itself, or at least not yet, uh, you're getting the capability of getting access into the 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 world of what Apple can do as far as iTunes goes and getting that content, whether you're downloading music or getting movies that you would otherwise have on your iPhone, iPad, you can now get uh, pushed to 
your television without having to use any other peripheries outside of the Apple uh, TV. It's a box uh, just similar to like the Fire TV. It connects to your television, uses Wi-Fi, uses data, uh, and, and it gives you access into essentially a lot of the same things that stuff like Roku does or that the Fire TV does. It can get you Netflix. It can get you your Hulu. It can get you – I even think it has an Amazon Prime app. So it, it's not as if they're they're being exclusive about it. Uh, and with your Apple ID, you get included to the, the content that you have. Now, I, I believe that if you have Apple TV – um, I mean, obviously on your iPhone and your iPad, you already have the ability to download a Netflix app. You already have the ability to download a Hulu app and so on and so forth. Um, but you can save all that. I think there's a way to get into your Apple Apple TV account to get through to the specific channels that you want. Uh, they do, of course, have the add-ons, uh, Showtime, HBO Now. Uh, that's going to be the next frontier, I think. Uh, it's really interesting that HBO Go having uh, been very hesitant about making deals with anybody in regards to their content. They did their own at first. Everybody knows if you have HBO, you can get HBO Go. But now they're wanting to give people the ability to view their content without having a huge thing. And, and, and honestly, it had to have been the success of – Game of Thrones, and we're going to talk a great length about Game of Thrones uh, coming up here soon, but the pirating of Game of Thrones and the everybody desiring to watch the content that HBO provides, uh, namely being Game of Thrones. Sorry to say, I mean, uh, it, you can watch The Sopranos and you can watch uh, uh, The Wire and stuff on Amazon, but if you want new stuff like Veep and you want stuff uh, like Game of Thrones... A lot of people were wanting to watch it when it came out, but didn't want to pay for the subscription of cable or satellite just so they can get HBO. So a lot of torrenting went down, a lot of pirating went down, and they were losing a lot. So they've kind of come to their senses about what they were going to do to get people to be able to watch. So now, beyond HBO Go, you're going to get HBO Now. And I do believe it's a fourteen ninety nine. I think it's uh, fifteen bucks a month, but it gets you the ability to watch HBO programming without having to spend, you know, fifty to eighty to hundred bucks a month. Some people are spending on their stuff, so it gets you that premium uh, watching ability. So Apple TV is going to get you that. You can get that add on subscription. They also they 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 tote uh, NBA, uh, NHL, MLB. Really, NFL's NFL's that stick in the mud. That's sort of uh, sort of the great white buffalo for a lot of these people that are wanting to do streaming content. NFL has been very fickle about who they do deals with. Obviously, the Sunday ticket is still held up uh, in the I believe Direct TV realm. They do have they have their own. You can get a streamable uh, NFL network. Uh, type ability to be able to watch games and stuff in a package that exists through NFL.com, but soon, soon they're going to cross. They're going to cross. Soon they'll be you'll be able to get an NFL uh, uh, subscription if you're desiring to do that through Amazon Fire TV or through because right now you can get it on your TV, but people or on your computer, sorry. So you can go through NFL.com and you can get that. Service. I think right now what they do is you can you can get it and you don't get to watch the games live, but you get to watch them the following day. But it's the full game, uh, license and everything. But soon soon they're going to follow because nobody wants to watch it on their computer. Uh, people want to be able to watch it on their big screen TVs, and eventually they're going to make the deals. Uh, who gets it first? I don't know. I, I'm going to guess Amazon Fire TV would be the first to have it, considering its uh, availability to so many people. And to be able the ability to get that subscription, but Apple TV's got NBA, MLB, NHL. Uh, they got Hulu. They got Netflix. They got all the fixings. But like I said, not 4K compatible yet. You can have a 4K TV. You can get an Apple TV. You'll just be watching it in 1080p, which is no slouch. I mean, it's not that bad. Um, but outside of that, yeah. So the the interconnectivity of your regular Apple devices. 
as well as getting um, all those providers, Crackle, Hulu, Netflix, so on, all in the same deal. That's what Apple TV is going to get you. So if you want a comparable thing, it is very similar to the Amazon Fire TV. They just not have crossed the, uh, the 4K boundary. I believe they're available in 32 and 64 gigabyte capacities. Very standard for for Apple if you know uh, anything about their phones and what they do. Um, so they'll have that because I do believe what the TV – because they're like, well, why do I care what size the storage is? Well, you can purchase uh, movies and stuff through there through your account and – you can connect, not necessarily use it as a streaming or cloud service, but if you want to um, have basically use it as a hard drive for um, content that you have, you can use that as well. Um, I believe Amazon Fire is somewhat uh, a similar of a capability, but uh, Apple is going to allow you to do that. You can make the purchases and download them and have them, so you can carry them around, carry them around, and use them on uh, different platforms as well. So if you want to plug into a different TV, if you want to plug into uh, a computer along the way, you can do that as well. So Apple TV, uh, obviously, uh, Apple's known for the big price tag. It's still fairly comparable. You know, it's it's about 150 bucks uh, to get the Apple TV. Um, my brother has it. I haven't talked to him in a while, but uh, I know he might swear by the thing. So Apple TV's out there, very similar to the Amazon Fire TV. All right. All right. So that concludes our uh, first segment here of the show. We got that uh, down there for you. A little, a little knowledge before we get into the nitty gritty. This is the Golden State Media Concepts television podcast. Stick around. We'll be right back. Tired of searching the vast jungle of podcasts? Now listen close and hear this out. There's a podcast network that covers just about everything that you've been searching. Hey! The Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network is here. Nothing less than a podcast bliss with endless hours of podcast coverage. From news, sports, music, fashion, cooking, entertainment, fantasy, football, and so much more. So stop lurking around and go straight out to the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. Guaranteed to fill that podcast itch. Whatever it may be, visit us at www.gsmcpodcast.com. Follow us on Facebook and Twitter and download us on iTunes, SoundCloud, and Google Play. everyone we are back to the golden state media concepts television podcast all right everybody as we all know on sunday season six of game of thrones has concluded a lot of fallout involving that first off i want to let you know it may break your heart um the really the showrunners and creators of the show have admitted that there's only about Maybe between 13 to 17 more hours of TV going here. So obviously there will be a full season seven. Um, That may go the full 10 episodes. So that's 10 hours there. So if we're looking at a season eight, um, it it could be short. If it's going to be – if they say 73 hours, I'd imagine it would have to be something like – a full season seven, and then maybe a three-hour spectacular. Uh, maybe if they if it's going to be something close to seventy-five, we would get a full season seven. Maybe two or three hour episodes and a two-hour finale. You know, something like that. Obviously, because it, it's not going to run uh, a full two seasons uh, more. So, season six, I got to say, probably the best since season one a lot of the show in the mid especially seasons like three and four uh basically three three through five five out a little bit but three and four were those seasons where we're kind of wondering where's it all going there's so much build up so much build up you know a few seasons a few little you know moments of payoff but season six has delivered on a lot they're doing a lot of cleanup and by a lot of cleanup i mean a lot of bodies that are going out of the way um one thing to look at as far as season six goes is it has been 
the rise and really emphasis on the female characters. So if you are into the ladies of Game of Thrones, this was the season for that. And it really kicks off where Dorne is essentially overthrown um, and become a bit of a matriarchy now. That that really kicked off the season. And then we see the development. Obviously, Daenerys keeps going. That That's one thing that happened. This season involved her getting um, back into a massive Kalasar and would not be held down by the rule of the many calls that were there. Uh, if you saw that uh, uh, pretty awesome episode where she goes and just sets them aflame, it was pretty awesome. Of course, emerging naked as she does every other season. Um, she's taken over. So now she's got Marine. She's got all of um, uh, the the all the folks of the Dothraki are back. Um, they really went through and they really developed her. They they brought her a little bit further than she had been before. And we also see Arya comes back. I know a lot of people are getting played out with her a little bit because she seems just kind of whiny. There's not a lot in the waif that's going on, but we see her come back um, full force. Uh, no longer blind anymore. She's accepting her role a little bit more. Um, but but really the character I want to put the focus on here as far as the development of the female characters is is Sansa. And, you know, there's still a pretty big question mark as to what's going to happen with her. Um, I was just uh, texting a friend of mine before uh, I came in to do the show. Um, she was she asked me who who I thought was going to end up on the Iron Throne. Uh, we'll talk about that in the next segment a little bit. And then um, she was sad about, you know, a favorite of hers. Um, by the way, I don't know if I said, but there's spoilers going to be in, in this show. I'm sorry about that. But spoilers are coming. Um, And they've already been. So, so sorry about that. So maybe I should have put – maybe I should open it with spoiler. But she was asking me about it. Um, she was sad that Marjorie um, got offed, which, I mean, I didn't, I didn't really care too much about her. Um. But looking at the Iron Throne question, I had mentioned the possibility of of Sansa possibly being, by the end of it, the ruler of the North. And she responds that I, that, I, that she hoped that she goes crazy. And and I said that I, I don't – that wouldn't be good. It would be a very big disservice to the character. A, not a lot of people that were in episode one are still alive right now. And are still around, poor Rickon. Um, but more so, look at the journey. And and a lot of characters have gone through a journey in this show. Um, it, but to me, I mean, I mean, there there's there's a character that's literally died and come back. But the biggest one to me has been Sansa. She, if you go back and and if you have the ability. Literally just go watch the first and second episode of the show. I'm talking about season one, episode one and two. And then pop on episodes uh, really six through six through eight. She wasn't really in um, the last two episodes of this season because she was out, you know, doing some other stuff there. Um but just just take those two samples and you will see the the journey that this woman has gone on um she starts off really kind of i mean it, sorry to say the word stereotypically girly um was really just interested in getting married and being the queen and kind of staying away from a lot of this stuff, having to deal with brutality, um, a posture that she maintained uh, throughout season one and into season two, and then gets her wish, and she ends up in the hands of the abusive King Joffrey, um, gets married to Tyrion. That was a miserable experience. Then... After he's public enemy number one, 
Uh, Littlefinger takes her off and puts her into the worst hands of uh, uh, of in the Bolton clan, uh, a, a sadist. Uh, I mean, it. She just went from being so optimistic and so giddy and so happy and distant to to just abuse. Uh, it is it, it, the amount that she suffered at the hands of these people that. You know, we're arguably, and there were people that she believed she could trust in, and were told that she could that she could trust, uh, just to be sold down the river. And now, since she has such limited family left, I mean, <clears throat> if you go into, um, where we're going to get into basically the next segment, about the last two episodes, uh, when when Bolton comes and says that I have Rick and Stark, she knew he was dead. It, 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 she's she's become that tainted and and that it, it, honestly uh, just ruined by all of the terrible terrible things that have happened to her that she expects nothing but the worst you don't even know if she's hoping for the best anymore and there were a couple of those instances she's she's definitely Happy to be back in Winterfell. And when she presents John with the, uh, you know, the clothing with the with the wolf on it, she she's getting it back. And now she's trying to embrace this role of being the lady of the House of Stark, but but being back in the North. She wants nothing to do anymore with anything south of Winterfell. And that evolution of her character, um, to me, has been the biggest story of the show. And we're going to go into a little about. Uh, Cersei, because since since the ending of the last season, nothing. I mean, she's she was essentially just back to her being her from before, and then she takes a giant leap here um, after her son takes a giant leap uh, here in in the last episode of the season, and we're going to get through that um, here because this concludes. This is really just building up. I didn't even mention that you know that the Hound is back. Um, definitely set up to face off against the mountain, but will it be just him? I don't think, uh, with the zombie mountain they got going on in the show, he's going to be enough possibility, you know, cause I, and people are like, Oh, it's already set up. It's going to be the hound versus the mountain. No, I think the hound's going to need some help. And I think that help is going to come in a team up with that of the, of, uh, Brienne of Tarth. I think they're going to bury the hatchet. I think they're going to get along well. And I think it's going to be those two that take down the mountain, which should be a pretty cool fight. That's what I'm hoping for because Brienne's a tough cookie and, uh, it'd be nice to see her get some play there and take down another, uh, huge guy. So uh, stick around. That's just this segment. We're going to come right back at you and just talk about the last two episodes, which have been two of the best things you'll ever watch on TV. This is the Golden State Media Concepts television podcast. We'll be right back. Check out the show that's built on the MMA. From the UFC to extreme cage fighting, they got the fights covered. Check out the GSMC MMA podcast. Get the latest news on past or upcoming fights. Join us as we talk to and about some of the biggest names in the MMA, past, present, and future. When it's the fight game, there's just one show to check out. GSMCpodcast.com backslash MMA dash podcast. Don't forget to like them on Facebook and follow them on Twitter. Visit G. SMCpodcast.com for more info. Everybody, we are back on State Media Concepts Television Podcast, talking Game of Thrones, um, building up a lot in the season. As we mentioned, um, Daenerys had killed all the other calls. She is take over. She is the Khaleesi of Khaleesi's. Uh, Dorne taken over. Uh, now a matriarchy, um, colluding with the Tyrells, which we see in episodes nine and uh, nine and ten. There, um, the show ends with. Two amazing episodes and two amazingly different episodes. Now, I got to tell you, at least in my opinion, the episodes that have taken place in the North and they've generally been like just focused in that area have been the best episodes of this TV show. Uh, the first one came along 
when the the wildlings and everybody attacked the wall and that entire episode was just there it was just that fight and you know it ended with that little the little group of the of the night's watch reciting the oath and taking down the giant great fantastic episode eager got shot by the kid it was it was it was great the next one came when they were um, north of the wall trying to evacuate the wildlings and then the white walkers attacked you all remember the end of the episode where John's on the boat and he's slowly floating away and and the um the king of night just just raises arms and everybody stands up just a a beautiful and haunting episode battle of the bastards ramsey bolton versus john snow um a little bit more entertaining than batman v superman for some but this was the showdown um john had been risen from the dead um Bolton had Rickon you saw that he got that uh, there a few episodes prior and it, this was the showdown of showdowns because we hadn't seen really any apt army come up against Bolton everybody wanted to see him dead um nobody more than Sansa Stark that's for sure and the fight was absolutely brutal and and, and not just internal action it it wasn't about the sword play and all this other stuff, but just mounds, a mound of bodies. It, it was just, just hills of corpses. And at one point, I mean, John, he ends up falling and nearly gets, tra- it was just people moving forward. They didn't even know if the people they were stepping on were dead. It was just overwhelmed with just body after body clashing against. It, it, it was, it, it was a, you probably seen tons of films where there were armies on horseback and everything just just railing against each other. This uh, it, this was in a fantasy show, seemingly more real than any of those. It, it, it was incredibly intense, incredibly intense um, uh, fight. One ultimately resulting in the Knights of the Vale show up. Uh, Littlefinger comes through. They end up defeating um, the the Boltons there in Winterfell, so they reclaim the house. They take down the banners of the Flayed Man and put the uh, the Dire Wolf back up there as well. They should. Um, great, great episode, capping with um, Ramsay on the chair. Uh, he had made the threat that his dogs were going to feed upon uh, those of the Northmen, but it ended up he ended up getting that honor. It was pretty awesome. He got his – they didn't show a lot of it, but he ends up getting his comeuppance. Um, he ends up getting him there. Just the – not an emotion – I mean it wasn't an emotional um, – it wasn't an emotionally packed episode. Um, other than that, the feeling that you get when they put the people into the fray. And it was, I mean, they had done some other type of battles in the show before, obviously when, when, uh, um, uh, Westeros, when the, the Red Keep was attacked and that stuff, but this one got really gritty. This one got really down and into it. And there was such an intensity coming from John that is essentially that's going to be used later on to really get these people, um, to rally behind him, uh, to be their new leader. And really, this was what the episode was dedicated to. And this is where we saw Sansa had talked about in the previous uh, segment there that you really saw the effect that that Bolton's had on her and the news, uh, the evidence that they have that they have written in, in their midst. She knew he was dead. And that's her brother. And she would not advise John to do anything that was going to keep them from winning the battle, which partly include just having to accept that Rickon was going to die. She was like, Hey, I know what this guy's capable of. There's no way, there's no way he's going to live through this at all. It was intense. Then you move on to the next episode and the next episode had a, had a bunch of stuff happening. We see the collusion with uh, house Tyrell and uh, that of the new ladies of Dorne. We see, Xerxes exact her revenge on pretty much every person that's ever harmed her. They all got they all got stuck in the same place. She eludes her trial, 
and sets the place ablaze, just destroys everybody. They're all just – they're all dead. And then we see uh, – who knows what happened with Jamie? He went up north. I guess he's supposed to hold down Casterly Rock, but uh, he got out of out with the fries. Um, you know, the the old man that weds his daughters, he was the one that was, was responsible for the Red Wedding. Um, he got his comeuppance in the form of Arya Stark. Uh, killed him good. She actually killed uh, his kids too. It, that actually hadn't been – I mean after the Red Wedding that had been out of the show pretty much. Um, but Arya's making her way down south. And then we see um, – Varys has gone to Dorne. He's going to try to – they're trying to get more people to um, align themselves with Daenerys. And Daenerys has established herself. Um, she's got the boats because the slavers tried to overthrow her and she just straight up put the kibosh on that. Um, and then we see um, in the north that they have now deemed – uh, Jon Snow as being their new guy. He's the new king of the north. And an amazing performance from a 12-year-old girl who's playing Lady Mormont um, who who stands in this, uh, you know, this room full of people that aren't so sure about what they're going to do and whether they should accept Jon Snow. She stands up and just nails it. Um, she was fantastic. Little Lady Mormont. She was great. And now Sansa's by uh, John's side, and he's the new king of the north. Uh, he's got the Knights of the Vale with him. And, but their preoccupation is really about setting up this conflict for what's going to happen against the White Walkers. The, the battle for the Iron Throne is the last thing on their minds. And we also learn of John's parentage. John does not learn of the parentage, but Bran does it. So the viewer is now... Um, privy to who his mother really is for those of you that have been yelling about, you know, that whole thing since the show first started that, okay, you're right. R plus L equals J, whatever. Great. Pat on the back. But John doesn't know. He doesn't know where he came from. And and that'll obviously play a part here in the next season, uh, season and a half, whatever they're going to do with it. So season 10 was just a rip. I mean, it was a rip of a bunch of stuff that happened as opposed to the episode before, very focused, very centered. And then um, Tummin, who had seen what happened with everybody, including Marjorie, who was there, um, who died in the fire, he just straight jumps out a window. So now Cersei is sans any children and is now the queen of... Of Westeros, she ends up assuming the throne, and that's that. We assume that hasn't really been her bag. That she was more, she was wanting to manipulate and have power, but never really wanted to be on the throne itself. But now she is, and has really no one to share that with. Jamie has clearly lost affection for her. Her kids are no longer alive. She thinks that she's gotten rid of all of her enemies, but then the show ends with Daenerys on the sea with all of her ships. Getting help um, from uh, from the Greyjoys, uh, or at least Theon and his sister, anyway. So they have they have ships as well. Uh, really, for Cersei, who thinks that her problems have really been solved in that fire, they're honestly just beginning. All right, everybody, that concludes this week's show. Very excited. We'll be back here with you uh, with some new stuff here to talk about. Uh, you can check us out on GSMC Podcast. Dot com. Check us out on iTunes as well, and you can also get all the other uh, Golden State Media Concepts programming. And follow us on Facebook and Twitter. Thanks for hanging out with me today. I have been Drew, you have been wonderful, and this concludes your broadcast day. <laughs>